So what are the sailing stones? Which are fairly large, irregular shaped rocks, generally flat bottom, appear to move with the surface of flat, dry lake beds, leaving behind a trail of their movement. Do these rocks move? If so, how do they move? One of the keys to this is the rocks themselves. These rocks are broken off from larger structures, mainly by the action of frost. Water finds its way into a small crack in a rocky surface, and the water freezes overnight. With the frost, the ice now takes up slightly more space than the water did, so it widens the crack slightly. Next day, the crack has more room for more water in it, so when it freezes again next night, the crack opens wider still. With an area that regularly freezes overnight, has enough humidity or rain for water to accumulate in the cracks, this can actually happen quite quickly. The general vertical nature of the crack forming also has a tendency to create rocks which have a large flat surface on one side and a regular surface on the other. Next to the key is the tracks that appear behind the rocks. These form in general three different types. There are straight lines, very gentle regular curves, and a series of straight lines with occasional sharp changes in direction. Pleases them with the final key, the flat, dry lake bed itself, which has a thin crust of smooth clay on the top, which when it dries can prevent water on the surface from rapidly draining away. So if you put all these factors together, how can rocks sometimes weighing up to 300 kilograms move several hundred meters, that is even in a single night? Well, some of the same climatic conditions which eroded the rocks in the first place are acting here. A fairly thin layer of water accumulates on the dry lake bed, which then freezes overnight. The relatively flat bottom of the rocks creates a large surface area in contact with the ice, so minimises friction between the ice and the rock. This friction is reduced still further by the pressure of the rock on the ice, which causes the top of the small ice sheet to melt. This water on the top of the ice makes for a really slippery surface. Now, the wind, the wind then blows across the surface of the dry lake bed. It hits the irregular shaped surface of the rocks, and then much like a sail, pushes the rocks, then glide across the surface of the ice. In the morning, when the temperatures rise, and the ice melts, and evaporates the water, all that's left behind is a slight indentation in the surface of the lake bed. This occurs just on one night, you tend to get a straight line formed. The wind changes direction during the night, or if the area of the lake bed is on a slight slope, you can get a curved track. And if the movement occurs on several nights, you get a series of straight lines between different directions, depending on how the wind has changed from day to day. So you have one of the weird wonders of nature, which at first looks fairly baffling, but with some serious study by some dedicated scientists, can be relatively easily explained. That's sailing rock.